Okay, welcome back. And I'm preparing to attach the legs to the main cabinet. And what I've done is taken some 1x4 pine um, and made, uh, cut them instead of 3.5 down to 3 and a quarter, so I would end up with a square edge here um, because this comes pre radiused and it's natural. Uh, where you get it from the lumber yard, or at least here anyway. And so that means the other one gets cut down to two and three quarters. This would be three and a quarter. And that's been glued and stapled together. Now I need to glue it to the um, unit. And what I've done is I laid it up there and on its uh, height mark, and then I drew that line to indicate where to stop putting the glue so it would only get glued down in here where. It's going to look ugly. So, um, and since uh, um, <laughs> the it doesn't really need to be this whole amount of of glue um, in its raw state. So what I'm going to do is water it down. And I just got a gallon of glue here and a cup. It's best to mix the glue in a round cup than a square one easier I should say, not best. Um, and since I got four legs, it's going to take a good little portion, so that ought to be about close. And uh, behind, me, behind me here I have my um, bucket of water with a rag in it that I use for cleaning up glue, but I'm going to just scoop out water out of there, that way I can judge it. And it doesn't take an awful lot. Um, the uh, It's mainly <laughs> by, well, like anything else, experience. But what you want to end up with is a consistency of like, um, oh, chocolate milk, maybe, a little thicker than that, a little bit thicker, I suppose. And the reason you water it down, it doesn't take anything away from the strength of the glue too much, um, if at all, anything. Yeah, see, that's just about perfect right there. All right, and then what I use is a two and a half inch chip brush. You get them at Harbor Freight for 36 of them for 38 cents. Um, they're darn cheap. So since I got those lines down there, um, let's see if you're seeing. Okay, then it's easy to just to pick up your brush and your paint, or you <laughs> paint, paint the glue on. Okay, and now I'm gonna now I'm going to move you. This is to the other end of the east end of the bench. Let's see if I can get you where. Okay. Now, since I got the line measured based on what SketchUp told me. Um, the line right here is the top of the leg right there. That's the top of the leg based from this short point measurement right there. And so I know that that's 
don't pay any attention to this line. There was something else I was going by. Um, anyway, uh, so, yeah. And so what I'm using is what I, is what's referred to as a truss head screw or a washer head. And the reason that I use, I use these an awful lot, um, here in the shop. Um, the reason is, is because a regular screw, I'll just pick up one of these little guys, but the, the conical head on it will tend to um, split the wood, whereas that flat washer won't. And these are an inch and a quarter, and so two, three quarters is an inch and a half, so it won't blow through, the, through my um, rubber TPO uh, coating, which, by the way, is finished, uh, obviously. Um, uh, all four sides are done and it's mostly uh, ready for me to stand up as soon as I get the big one, which will happen. I'll show you the first one then I'll go off camera and I'll do the other three and the next thing you'll do, next thing you know you'll see it standing up. So let me show you how I'm going to do this and <clears throat> I've got a clamp here at the ready and I set it on my mark. And make a double check. Now I've got this little wooden knock knock here. Um, I made it a long time ago. Uh, nothing more than a wooden handle dowel with a pin in it. And this thing came from a a uh, coffee table I found at my favorite shopping mall. And so since we don't know that the corner is exactly square, you get it a little bit tight here and then you can drive it in and it'll make it square. pre-drilled um, I know where they wanted to go RB and so I can't do the middle one because the clamp is in the way but and then I'm also using a a uh, rigid impact driver um, it doesn't matter about the brand name is that I'm aware of but if you don't have one of these impact drivers run don't walk and get one they are so stinking nice especially especially for taking off tight nuts and bolts or whatever um these things are incredible And that, as they say in Hollywood, is a wrap. I'll get pick this back up when the other three legs are on and this thing is standing up. Uh, signing off for a moment. Well, the thing is coming, becoming more enormouser and enormouser as, I, as it goes along here. The legs are you know, fastened down. Earlier I had the the uh, legs facing off on the east end of the bench and I spun it around and I'm on the south and south side of the bench and the reason for that is I'm fixing to put the top 
and mill out the door, uh, the window door. <laughs> it's actually both, a window and a door. Um, so I'm going to stand this up and you can see um, at the same time I do what this thing is going to look like standing up and I'll try to now this thing is kind of <clears throat> well bulky but um, I'm hoping it's not going to be a problem Well, there she is, standing in the direction of up, and now I'm going to, uh, let me go get the drawing. Now I'm going to mill the top part which is solid and then the door window door um, this little raised part right here at the top of the line that little guy right there that's the um, at the time I drew it it was the um, we want to call it the frame around the glass so the glass would set in from the top and then this would go down and since then I've changed my mind the glass is going to be recessed from the bottom so that the flat the, the top part of the door is going to be flat so I'm going to mill that out here in just a second the angle here according to SketchUp again I didn't bother printing it really nice but I measured the angle and it's 18 degrees so eight, they both get cut 18 degrees and I've already done that uh, like you seen me earlier, I cut two blocks, or one block and two parts, and I held them, one there, one there, and they came together perfectly. So, um, another reason that SketchUp, for me, is so handy, uh, and so important here in the Twisted Knot Woodshop. So, I'll pick this up here in a bit, and, um, we'll, after the, these two, pe after these two pieces are milled, Okay, we're back. Um, one of the things I did before I milled the top and the door, which I'll show you here in a little bit, was to put the two pieces of pipe in there that I mentioned earlier to support the middle of the of the screen this way, so you know front to back, so it wouldn't uh, mesh down in there. You know, even though it's only 20, 23 inches deep or 22 and a half, I think it is. Um, so I put those in there, you know, in case for heavier items. And it's easier to stick it in there now than it would be, um, be, you know, before the or after the top was put down. Which brings me to the moment where uh, sometimes in the shop, after you design a project on SketchUp, say, that when you get to putting it together, you notice a few things that maybe would be beneficial to include or to consider uh, aside from the original drawing, which is this one. And if you'll notice that the door, uh, this would be the window door, and the top is way up there I mean it's hard to see but you can see that individual line is flush to the what would be the outside edges of the cabinet and I got to thinking about that and I said you know I don't know that that is a keen idea so what I did was um, What I did was mill it so that the edge or the end sticks over by a half an inch on both ends 
And to me, that looked a little bit more appealing in, uh, well, obviously just aesthetics. But it also made better sense that, um, and now, <laughs> this cabinet is square, um, but say you don't have, um, you know, an accurate table saw or you're cutting it with a skill saw or whatever, it would be beneficial to extend it over a little bit because if it isn't, if, if you cut your, your top piece square and your, your cabinet or the box is not square, then, um, sorry, the camera just refocused because of my finger. Um, but if the cabinet is not square, then you, this edge won't be, you know, true to the, to the box. So, but I'm making it, I'm overhanging it because it just seems aesthetically better for me. Uh, so, now, then I got to thinking, originally I was just going to glue it and staple it down. And I, then I thought, boy, Joe, um, that might be a stupid idea. Uh, because if you ever have to get in there to take the screen out to replace it or whatever, um, it would be gosh damn difficult. So what I did was I went into my scrap metal drawer and I pulled out this chunk of aluminum um, angle. Uh, it's 3 sixteenths, I think. It doesn't look quite to be a quarter. Um, and I laid it out four uh, lengths. And this thing's in, in this case, two and five eighths is each individual piece. So I'm going to put one on the front kind of on the more towards the front on each end and then two in the back and these will be screwed to the cabinet itself and then it'll be a through hole that I'm going to tap drill and tap and I'll show you that here in a bit and I'm just going to take these over right now to the cutest bandsaw ever and show you how that you can cut a lugeman uh, with a bandsaw uh, any any bandsaw blade will work. You don't need a well any bandsaw that you're cutting aluminum, aluminum uh, with. You don't need a, a a special blade. Just a regular quarter inch uh, five tooth blade will be more than fine. Anyway, I reach back here, turn on the <coughs> excuse me, turn on the light, and since we're not you know, um, this ain't brain surgery here. Um, uh, but just follow the line kind of closely and then we'll get there. And when you cut in aluminum, um, it cuts fine. It cuts nice, in fact, but you only cut, you only feed as fast, just like anything else, you only feed as fast as it's cutting, especially with metal. Um, you start cutting it, you start pushing it too fast, and things happen, and you don't want to have those things happen. So here we go. The cutest bandsaw ever. Big shout out to Frank Romeo for providing that swell little LED task light from uh, clear from New Jersey. Well, Sweden, IKEA, then New Jersey. All right, so back to the back to the box. Um, like I said, these things I'm gonna drill two hole. Shit, hang on. I'm gonna drill two holes. One there and there to mount to the side of the box, and then a through hole here that'll be drilled and tapped to accept 
bolts that'll come through and go <laughs> and then that'll make the top removable. See you in a bit. All right, I'm over here at the vise laying out these angle brackets for mounting to the inside of the cabinet and ultimately the lid to those. And what I've done is just set the um, combination square to half this width here, which is one inch. Um, and then just used a blue marker. Uh, by the way, if you don't have these in the shop, you need to get these, these little Sharpies. They're handy for marking glass, metal, um, especially aluminum, because sometimes pen, uh, pencil mark on there just doesn't show up very well. Um, and, but they just, they're handy and they're cheap. I determined that I want the mounting, the holes to mount the bracket to the cabinet itself about five eighths of an inch from the edge or the ends. And what I do is just set the combination. Again, this is not rocket surgery. Um, just get it close. And then I have, and if you don't have one of these, boy, there's a lot of things in this shop that you all need. Um, this is a Sterrett uh, tool. Um, I'm sure there are probably other manufacturers, um, Brown and um, Brown and what the hell's the other? Yeah, Brown and somebody. Um, but this one's a Sterrett, and it's a spring-loaded thing. Um, so you set it on your mark, push it down, and the spring load will leave a dent there to. Um, for your drill bit to get for your drill bit to get centered in. If you look, you can see it. A you know, little tiny, little tiny. Well, maybe I don't know. Can you get it up here? And, yeah. Or well, the light's not shining on it. You can see the little indention there. And then this one here will be the hole that gets tapped. So I'm just going to put that in there, and uh, that I know that this is two and five eighths, so it'll be an inch and five sixteenths, which is right about there. Yep, perfect. Um, this is a Bridge City Tool Works combination square, and it's got 30 seconds on this side, the stupid M word on that side, or yeah, that side, and then if you flip the blade over, it's in the stupid M word, and then again, 30 seconds on this side, and it's pretty cool. And I'll just mark it really fast, snap it. I'll do the other three and I'll pick this up over at the drill press. Okay, I'm over here set up at the drill press. I've got a the angle fence that I use uh, frequently for uh, throwing things against, you know, to measure or to drill accurate, you know, holes aligned. And for this purpose, I'm just going to use that to hold the angle up off of the table surface. That way I don't have to have any, like, stupid block or something like that of course this is a block but anyway i got the bit set in there that i think is the clearance for one another of those truss head screws so let's find out drilling aluminum is a whole lot different than drilling steel um it's a lot softer obviously but um when you're drilling steel it's highly recommended to slow your bit down uh the rpms down and then clamp it with aluminum, you can get by without doing it, or I do anyway. All right, and I also got the depth stop set so that it only goes into this edge just a tiny little bit, so. It's it doesn't bark up that and it looks like the bit needs to be a, a little bit bigger I kind of figured it was going to be it acted a little goofy when 
when I was uh, sticking it in the hole inside the drill index box. There's three holes in the chuck for a reason. Use every one of them. I'm resetting the, the depth or the stop because I changed the bit. Another reason you want to set the bit to so it barely breaks through is so if you have it so that it goes for deeper this way, especially with steel, it'll have a chance to grab and suck it up in your hand. Oh yeah, see now, even that's just a little tight. That gone it. I've got the drill index box mounted around around over there behind just behind the drill press and um, makes it easy to get to. Again, I'm resetting the depth. Stop. It seems to be about right. Try it again. Ta da! Okay. Off and running. Also, it helps to have sharp drill bits, especially with steel. Aluminum you can, aluminum you can get by uh, with a dollar bit, but why fight it? Oh, and over, over there is one of the shop cart that I keep telling you people that you can't live without. They think those things are so handy. You roll them around, you put stuff on them. Um, uh, just, you know, the, for the next stage or whatever, or tools. Um, outfeed table for your table saw. pick this up uh, when we're ready to tap the holes for the bolts. Okay, back over here at the vise and I'm ready to tap the holes for these mounting brackets. And depending on how, um, how you arrange your bolts and nuts and such, if you just throw them all together, uh, that could be a, a possibility of a hazard in that um, you might have the stupid M word bolts mixed in with uh, American bolts but in order to tap it properly um, use the proper tap you have to first use the proper drill bit and then how do you determine that well you first start with your bolt um, threads to find out what pitch they are or how many threads per inch this is another stare at tool it's a thread gauge uh, a pitch gauge and what it does is make sure that however many teeth that you have or um, threads excuse me in the bolt which in this case it's a, supposedly a 5 16 18 which means 5 16 in diameter and 18 threads per inch which is what that one is so I'm good there since I know I'm going to be using four I check every one of them and you can't see any daylight coming through. Hold on, let me get it up there. Can't see any daylight coming up through between the threads and the gauge. We're good there. Pick up another one. 
and we're good there. And the last one, which is a different color bolt because I had to go to a, um, another style. This one here has a, a star washer forced onto it, whereas these bolts have the shoulder, you know, a washer bolt. Um, but it's the same, same thing, same length anyway, and we're good there. Now, if you don't have one of those thread gauges, another thing you can use is the tap itself and you lay the tap up there into the threads of the bolt and if they mesh and then the diameter of the bolt and your tap is the same you'll have no problem all right now how do you determine what size drill bit to use for a tap because if you look at the tap it's printed on there well maybe you can see it um, if not i'll read it to you it says um 5 16 18 NC. NC means national course. Uh, you can also have Nash NF, which would be national fine. But we're going to do 5 16 uh, Oh, yeah, you can read it now. 5 16 18 NC. Um, well, you go to a tap drill chart. First off, you find out what the size drill bit you need for whatever size bolt. So you go and look up, in this case, 5 16 18. It tells you you need a F, so F as in um, fornitude, um, uh, an F size bit. There are three different types of bits. There are number size, there are letter size, and then there are fractional sizes. And then, of course, you have that stupid, ignorant M size um, uh, bullshit. So, but I'm using an F. And then if I go to the decimal equivalent chart for an F, number F, or a letter F bit, it says it's 0.257, which 0.257 is close enough to Uncle Joe for one quarter of an inch, especially if it's aluminum. So, if, but if you're, uh, you know, doing rocket science, then you would want the F size bit. But we're going to get away with that. And so how do you turn one of these? Yeah, you can put a wrench on the end of that, but that blows goats. Um, use this little handle affair here. That's, you stick that in there like that there, and you tighten it up. And it becomes an automatic handle. You can see where the square part of the die or tap is in there being held nice and snug and then all we do is just stick it in the hole and get it now with aluminum <clears throat> it's a whole lot easier to tap aluminum than steel sometimes with steel depending on how thick it is you start it, you turn it a little bit then you back it off and then you turn a little bit back it off squirt some cutting fluid in there and then you know carry on until you get through it with aluminum especially you know with a quarter inch or three sixteenths which is what i think this is i haven't measured it um it goes pretty fast and uh you don't have to monkey around with all that business but the idea is to get it started so you're fairly straight the rest of the if you notice it's tapered um a little bit here on the point so that allows you to get started they have other taps that are flat bottom uh meaning you can tap to a bottom of a drilled hole uh so that the threads go you know if the if the hole hang on if your hole is like that and you want threads to go all the way down to the bottom then they have a, what they call a flat uh, bottom tap but uh, since I'm cut, you know, going through I don't need that you can still use it but it's harder to start and it just takes a few seconds to get it to go like I said the, the conical part or the tapered part at the end will get it started for you and then the rest of it will just kind of flow with the with the um, with the bit, and you want to or the bit the tap, and you want to go until it starts doing that. If it can do that, you wouldn't go far enough. Back it off and do your next one. Or if this is your last one, you don't have to do a next one. This so idea is to be careful, uh, especially around steel parts like this vice. You don't get your tap or um, they're hardened and they're and they're very brittle and so if you get you know bound up or something you could snap it especially in steel so you got and the, and the, the smaller it is for sure uh, the bigger ones they're a little bit more graceful 
All right, I'll, I'll do the rest of these and I'll show you how I put them to mount them to the cabinet. Talk to you in a bit.